Good morning again. So I'm Ted Hennepin. I'm general manager of the Hampton Road Sanitation District, and I'm privileged to be honored uh, to host this event for you all today. It marks another big milestone for SWIFT, HRSD, the Hampton Roads region, and the environment. You know, four years ago last month, we gathered at our York River treatment plant to announce SWIFT and taste the water for the first time. The following March, we gathered right here at Nanseman to break ground, right over there, pouring rain. Many of you were there for that as we broke ground for this research center. And we cut the ribbon for the USGS extensometer, which is just over here to my left, a few hundred yards. In May of 2018, we were almost in this exact spot. And we were here to celebrate the startup of this research center. To date, we've successfully returned 375 million gallons of water to the thirsty and overdrawn Potomac Aquifer. It's the first step on our path to nearly 100 million gallons each day by 2032. Ensuring a sustainable supply of groundwater will be available for future generations. Beyond the groundwater benefits, SWIFT will reduce our nutrient discharges to the Chesapeake Bay and potentially slow the impact of rising seas by eliminating land subsidence related to overwithdrawal of the aquifer. The SWIFT promises are game-changing benefits to our region, but achieving those benefits requires a significant investment. We continue to work ways to find uh, ways to reduce the cost burden to our ratepayers, and the administrator of US EPA, Andrew Wheeler, is here this morning to announce how EPA is going to help us do just that. Before I ask him to the podium, I would like to acknowledge some of the guests here with us this morning. HRSD, as many of you know, or probably all of you know, is governed by an eight-member commission appointed by the governor. Six commissioners, actually I think we've got five with us this morning. We've got our chairman, Rick Ellison. We've got our vice chair, Dr. Mo Lynch. We've got uh, commissioner, Dr. Vishnu Lakdawala. We've got commissioner, Steve Rodriguez and we've got Commissioner Willie Levinston. So thank you all for being here. And representing the governor and the Commonwealth of Virginia today, we are pleased to have a good friend of HRSD, David Paler. Thanks for being here. Head of, he's the director of the Department of Environmental Quality. So with that, I'm gonna introduce Administrator Wheeler. So on February 28th, 2019, the US Senate confirmed Andrew Wheeler as the 15th Administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency. President Donald J. Trump had announced his appointment as the acting administrator on July 5th of 2018. Mr. Wheeler had previously been confirmed by the Senate as the EPA deputy administrator on April 12th of 2018. He's dedicated his career to advancing sound environmental policies. He began his career during the George H.W. Bush administration as a special assistant in EPA's Pollution Prevention and Toxics Office. He was a principal and team leader of the Energy and Environment Practice Group at Fagri BD Consulting, as well as counsel at Fagri Baker Daniels Law Firm, where he practiced since 2009. He also served as the co-chair of the Energy and Natural Resources industry team across the entire firm. Prior to his work with the firm, he served for six years as the majority staff and chief counsel, as well as minority staff director of the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works. And before his time on the Senate e EPA EPW Committee, he served in a similar capacity for six years for the Subcommittee on Clean Air, Climate Change, Wetlands, and Nuclear Safety. He's the past chairman of the National Energy Resource Organization and a Stennis Fellow. He's also an Eagle Scout. He's from Fairfield, Ohio, completed his law degree at Washington University in St. Louis, his MBA at Virginia's George Mason University, and his undergraduate work at Case Western Reserve University in English and Biology. Administrator Wheeler and I have several things in common. An appreciation for Cincinnati chili, whether made at home or served five ways at Skyline. An affinity for interesting socks, which he didn't bring any today, so you know, we'll have to worry about work, work on him for that. And a recognition that the nation needs to invest and continue to invest in infrastructure to ensure future generations inherit clean waterways and are able to keep them clean. And so with that, Mr. Wheeler. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here today. Thank you for the introduction. 
and I'm sorry I disappointed you on my socks today. I will do better next time. And I debated. I was looking at a pair with sharks on them and the ones that I have on now. I should have gone with the sharks. Um, it's a privilege to be back here in the Tidewater again. Last time I was in Suffolk was back in August when we highlighted some of the great community work being done to clean up the Nansamon Ordnance Depot Superfund site. I want to thank David Paler, the Director for the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality, for being back here today again with me. Thank you very much for being here. For the past 50 years, EPA has focused on protecting human health and the environment. One of the things that we're proud of is not just cleaning up past pollution, but planning ahead so that future environmental problems don't surprise us. Potential water, water shortages are one of those problems. Water scarcity isn't just a regional issue for places like the Western United States. 40 out of the 50 states ex expect some kind of fresh water shortage in the next decade. There are many places like Suffolk and the Tidewater region that have seen their population grow over the past years, and this growth is expected to continue for the next several decades. With this growth will come more demand for fresh water. That's why I'm proud to announce a billion dollar master agreement to provide WIFIA funding and the first $225 million WIFIA loan under this agreement to the Hampton Roads Sanitation District. With these actions, WIFIA will help finance one of the first major water reuse programs on the East Coast of the United States. EPA is committed to ensuring the security and resiliency of our nation's water supply. We committed to this with our federal, state, and local partners in the National Water Reuse Action Plan, which I announced this past February. In that plan, EPA highlighted the power of WIFIA to support investments in water reuse just like this one. The $225 million loan is going to support the Sustainable Water Initiative for Tomorrow program, known as the SWIFT program, which will help replenish the overdrawn Potomac Aquifer and restore its water supply. All told, about 20 projects across the surface area will build wells to add high quality water back into the stressed Potomac Aquifer, which in turn will reduce surface water discharges into the Chesapeake Bay by about 100 million gallons a day. EPA's $225 million WIFI loan will help finance roughly half of the current $460 million in project costs and will save the sanitation district over $72 million compared to typical market financing in this project phase. This funding will also help create over 1,400 jobs. In July, Virginia's Clean Water State Revolving Loan Program closed on a loan with the, revol with the Sanitation District to finance $100 million to support SWIFT, making it the largest revolving loan in Virginia to date. In the past four years, EPA has contributed over $192 million to the Virginia State Revolving Fund. And the billion-dollar WIFIA Master Agreement will allow multiple WIFIA loans to be executed under a single agreement, which will increase efficiency, save everyone time, and save ratepayers $300 million over the life of the loan. The WIFIA loan program is only a few years old, and already 34 loans have helped finance more than $14 billion in water infrastructure projects across the country, improving watersheds and protecting public health and the environment. The investment made today will not only help the Potomac Aquifer, it will help reduce discharges into the Chesapeake Bay. I remain committed as the EPA Administrator to a robust Chesapeake Bay program, and I'm proud of the work EPA has accomplished together with our state and local partners. I point out this is the second WIFI loan to help benefit the Chesapeake Bay. Last year I was able to announce a loan to the City of Baltimore for a new water sanitation project. So in addition to our traditional Chesapeake Bay programs, we are using all of the tools at our disposal to help restore the bay and get it to a clean state. The bay is a natural, national treasure, and today's action will further protect the bay for years to come. 
of the Trump administration's commitment to clean water, clean air, and clean land has been demonstrated not just here in Virginia and in this great water watershed, but across the country. Whether it's brownfields or non-attainment work, or in this case, improving water quality, EPA's purpose is to make a difference in the health and well-being of communities. In the first three years of this administration, air pollution has fallen by 7%. Since President Trump entered office, EPA has invested over $40 billion in new water infrastructure. I'll now have to add that to 40 billion plus 200, well, over $40 billion. EPA delisted 27 super funds last year, the most in a single year since 2001. We delisted another 27 this year, bringing our total during the first term to 82 Superfund delistings. And the Trump EPA has already collected more in criminal and civil penalties on the enforcement side than in the first four years of the Obama-Biden administration. And we are on track to collect more than twice as much before the end of this year. There is much more work to do but as the efforts being made here in Suffolk show, real improvement in water quality and reuse can be made through cooperation and determination. I want to thank everyone again here today. Communities in Virginia will only get stronger as a result of your hard work. This is a real win if you think about the benefit to the water aquifer, the benefit to the Chesapeake Bay, the, the billion dollar master um, loan that we've committed to, and the jobs that will result from this announcement today. Thank you all very much for being here. You just stay right there at the sure. check. And uh, Rick, I'll ask, I'd like to ask the chair of the HRSD Commission to join Administrator Wheeler. A little photo op at the check. It's a, it's a physically appropriate six foot long check by design. It's a COVID check. Got what they need. I got one more going. And there'll be more photo ops after the ceremony. Thank you, Mr. Wu. Absolutely. Great. You want to come on over and let me just put this on yep. real fast. <laughs> We're all getting used to our ups and downs. Yeah, I'm gonna go without a mask. You know, we would have glasses. These masks don't help at all. <laughs> but uh, thanks so much on behalf of the entire commission. Uh, the eight of us that, uh, that meet on a regular basis, um, and the Commonwealth of Virginia. We are pleased uh, to partner with the US EPA through this amazing WIFIA program. The 1.42% uh, interest rate was unimaginable when we laid out our 2.2 billion program, and with the 1.048 billion from WIFIA, uh, over the next 13, uh, 13 years. Our ratepayers will avoid an estimated 300 million in financing costs over the next 30 years uh, of this loan. And I gotta add a personal note, when we sat down, uh, what, about three weeks ago to sign the agreement, I thought the biggest loan I'd ever signed was, was uh, gonna be my mortgage, but this was a billion dollar with the alone at an astronomical good rate that's going to help our uh, our ratepayers uh, immensely thank you much hopefully your loan for your house isn't even close just saying uh, so uh thank you rick so if you're keeping track of all the numbers and there have been a lot of numbers thrown out there the loan covers 49 percent and that's by statute of our program, 2.2 billion program. So part of that difference will be made up, as, it, as the Administrator Wheeler had stated, by the Virginia Resources Authority and the Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund. And that $100 million deal will help make a big difference. And while that's uh, gonna go to a lot of projects, it's gonna help us with SWIFT as well. So this program's administered by the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality, represented by Director Dave Paler. 
Dave's a great friend of HRSD. He's been supportive of SWIFT since its beginning. And uh, anyway, I'd like to welcome Dave to the stage to say a few more remarks from the Commonwealth's perspective. Thanks, Ted. Um, it, it's really uh, good to be here. Um, as, uh, uh, as Ted knows, a number of folks know, uh, for at least the last 10 years, one of the things that, uh, that I've been worried about is head loss in the uh, uh, coastal aquifer. Um, and really, if we do nothing, if we did nothing, probably in about 30 years, there wouldn't be much water left in the coastal aquifer. Uh, we've done a number of things, but uh, one of the most promising long-term uh, projects uh, is SWIFT uh, to rehydrate the aquifer. And, um, and so this has really been a great project. Um, glad to have EPA as a part of it. Glad Virginia can be a part of it. It's uh, really a project that uh, is good for all Virginians, and it's a win-win-win. Uh, we rehydrate the aquifer, uh, we uh, start to reverse uh, some land subsidence, and a whole lot fewer nutrients make it to the bay. So it's a great environmental project. Um, I'm just so glad that uh, we're able to be as far along as we are, and thank you to EPA and, and the federal government for uh, helping us to move this project forward. Very important for Virginia. Thank you. One last comment, Mr. A. Wheeler. You know, we've done a lot of work with EPA over our time at HRSD, and the WIFIA staff has been by far the easiest, best group to work with we've ever had. I mean, I've got our finance folks over there, and we're just amazed at how smooth that process was. So please pass that along to your, uh, your staff. I know uh, a lot of those folks are just great people, and uh, we're really, really happy with how that worked. So with that, uh, that concludes our formal remarks. Administrator Wheeler has agreed to be here for the media, uh, some media availability right here, uh, and then we'll move over to the research center for some more photos and some tours. And so with that, thank you again for being here. Appreciate it. Any questions? Any compliments? <laughs> You're welcome. So, no questions? Wow. Well, I do want to thank the WIFIA staff at EPA. Um, they've done an incredible job. This is a new program, only three years old. Um, and they've really done an incredible job working through the loans, making it very easy for, for people to, to apply. Um, it's up front, the, the, um, the scoring mechanism for, for how we score all the loans is very upfront and open, and we haven't had any complaints from anyone throughout the, the three years of the program, which I think is unusual for the beginning of a program. Um, usually there's a lot of questions and, and frustrated people, but we haven't seen that at all. And I really think the WIFIA program is one of the most successful loan programs um, in the federal government, not just at EPA. And that's because of a lot of the hard work of our dedicated career staff at EPA. Um, so if there's no questions, um, I, I'm looking forward to the tour. Thank you all very much for being here. <laughs>